Howdy, Possum Patty here, and I'm just journaling, so come on along. Okay, first of all, in my Wonders of Nature, Little Golden Book Nature Journal, if you're following along, you know yesterday I made this really fun magnetic page because I had gotten all these magnets at the flea market a few weeks ago. And I made this pocket and I put them in there. And I made this page that's interchangeable and I can play with the magnets whenever I want to. I've got the monarch butterfly out here because I saw a big one fly by. So he's there. And then this side I did a little identification chart of the birds and butterflies and one more bird there that were in the yard. And it's funny because yesterday I was doing this and I took a break and I walked up the lane to get the mail. And as I went by the jumble of stones that I was telling everybody about how it's a habitat for all these different critters, well, I saw one of the critters. So if you don't like snakes, you can look away right now. But I believe it was a garter snake, but it could possibly have been a ribbon snake. Now, ribbon snakes love to be more by the water. But there are a lot of wet spots around here. But this one looked like it was living in the wall. So I'm going to think this one was a garter snake. And I knew it was one of these two, that one or this one, because of the yellow stripe on the back. Of course, garter snakes come in different patterns and colors, but um, this is a common one we have around here. Well, actually, we have both kinds. And there's probably ribbon snakes around here, but probably more over towards the pond, where my land is like swampy, um, wetland. Wetlands means part of the year it's a little drier, part of the year it's a little wetter. So it's more of a habitat for the garter snake. So anyway, so then I came back, I didn't get a picture of it, it was too fast, but when I came back and I was working on this, I was thinking of this grass and I was thinking, oh, wouldn't it be so cool to um, get a picture of a garter snake and I printed one out from the internet there and cut it out and then put some slits in this page and weave the snake in and out these pieces of grass. And I can do my journaling up there. I can even add a little information card. Now this is from a, um, a nature book that I bought for like 50 cents. I just use it for pictures, I cut it up. So I can put the garter snake information there, do my journaling and put the snake down here through the grass. I thought that would be really cool. I know this is not everybody's cup of tea, but you know, this is Possum Patty. And tell you the truth, when I was teaching third grade, I had a pet garter snake. It was very large. It was about three feet. And I think it was more of a western garter snake. It's not one I took from the wild. No, it was one I bought. And it was so good with the kids in the classroom. Now, I let them handle the snake. I taught them how to handle the snake, and if they knew how to handle it correctly, then I let them take the snake back to their desk. And it could sit with them during the day, and, you know, it would go all around, and it would go inside their desk, and... They just love this snake. It, it never hissed. It never... What they do is they, they squirt this really stinky liquid when they get afraid. They can even bite. You know, they're not venomous, but, you know, they do have teeth because they eat. But never bit, never hissed, never squirted. Um, as long as the kids handled it correctly, and I gave everybody a lesson on snake handling, um... Yeah, you know, it was good. They loved it. All the kids loved it. And then one day, 
You know, it's always the parents. It's always the adults. It's never third graders. I love third graders. They can just get used to anything. They, you can teach them anything. They're excited about life. They're um, so wonderful to work with. They really listen and behave. Especially when you do fun things with them. And... Um, yeah, so one day this father came into the classroom, and it just so happened that his daughter, it was his daughter's turn, to hold the snake. Well, doesn't she run up to her father? She's got the snake in her hands, and she runs up to her father and says, Daddy, Daddy, look. Oh, the kids named the snake Yellow Ray because of the yellow stripe down the back. Daddy, Daddy, look, Yellow Ray. And she hands the snake to her father. I think it kind of scared him a little bit, maybe. And he grabs the snake. Like, if this is a snake's head, he grabs the snake by the back of the head like this. I mean, like, really, really tight. And you could see the snake's mouth go like, ah! And it just went, Psh! just squirted this really stinky, smelly liquid. It's a defense mechanism all over the father. Yep, all over the father. I couldn't believe it. Well, I could believe it because he didn't know how to handle the snake. This snake was in my classroom for, you know, I don't know what, four or five years. It was a couple years old when I got it. So it lived a very long time in the classroom. Never, ever, ever, ever with any child ever showed any signs of being afraid or being aggressive. And then one day a parent comes in, grabs the snake, and the snake just lets loose. I mean, I thought it was funny, but I don't think the father did. I did have a problem with one other set of parents. Well, I mean, I didn't have a problem. They had a problem because I think they were from India. And I guess they were from a region where the snakes are poisonous, probably cobras or something. And uh, the snake made them very nervous. So I had to take it out of the room when they came, but that's okay. Not everybody has to love a snake. And not everybody so then I got two ball pythons so I named one Monty as Monty Python and I named the other one Gilda Rattler after Gilda Radner I mean she wasn't a rattlesnake she was a ball python and they were very good too but they were a little harder to keep than the um garter snake. I wound up, when I married Mr. Possum, we moved and he insisted that it was either him or the snakes because he doesn't like snakes the way I do. We gave him to his friend's daughter because she, she likes snakes. So they got a good home. But yeah, he knows I like snakes, so if there's a snake out on the stone wall or something, he'll he'll point it out. So, oh, look, there's a snake over there. And he stays away, and I run over and I look at it. So on our jumble of stones, I guess it's supposed to be a stone wall, but it's not really. Just a pile of stones. Um, we've seen the ring neck, ring neck snake and... The garter snake, not a giant garter snake, smaller garter snake. And I'm going to try and cut this with a knife. Okay, here comes the tricky part. It doesn't matter because this page is white, so I'll be covering that page with something anyway. So it doesn't matter what it looks like on the back. So we want the head poking out. Okay. 
Oops. It didn't go through, did it? This is a Dollar Tree knife. I don't know exactly how sharp it is. Or it could just be me. I'm not that good with knives. there and let's see somewhere around he here maybe somewhere around here See where my slit is. I get my slit is there. Okay, it's really hard to see your slits with this grass. I think I made one. I think I made one. This video is not for unsupervised children. Sharp, dangerous tools are being used. Okay, we'll just pick that up. That's fine. Because then we can glue it down. Alright, let's see. Somewhere around here. make this a wide space so this one will go in the whole thing I'll worry about how I'm gonna glue it when I'm done go in there. It needs to be a little larger. Okay, I'll make this a separate video all by itself because I know a lot of people can't watch anything with a snake. What I'm trying to do here is not ruin it like I just did. There we go. So that that can go there. There. There, 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 there. Okay, so now I can make a big slice here. Okay, which way would that go? Stick this in here. I 
think this needs to either go up higher or down down lower. I don't want to go too far to the edge. Alright, do I have any more snake stories? Because it's gonna take me a while. Oh, when I was four years old. We lived on a farm in North Salem, Connecticut, and my mother's father lived with us, and he was working the garden, because that's what he liked to do. And, um... I was walking out towards the barn, and in front of the barn was a rattlesnake. So we lived up on the mountain. Rattlesnakes like to live up on the mountain. And Grandpa grabbed a pitchfork and stabbed a sucker before he could get me. And then I think we saved the rattle or the snakeskin or all of it for my father's friend, Bernie Powell who was a naturalist. And Bernie is the man who wrote the book about my grandpa. Which I should read from one of these days. Oops. Oh no, I just broke that one. That's okay. Never thought it'd be so hard to get a snake in the grass. Okay, I've got, I think one more piece to stick in here. This is a lot of fussing for a snake, right? Great. There we go. Oh, I broke that one too. I am not doing well with this paper. just to cut from the bottom up a bunch of strips. What do you think? I can take anything that's easy to do and make it hard. I think that is enough. A snake in the grass. Slit this down. Oh, that looks like it's going to rip though. If I do that, that might work better.
I think that's enough. You know what I think I'm going to have to do is get a piece of paper for this side and then cover this with glue and put a piece of paper on there. So stand by. Okay, this is another one of my new Michaels 9.99 clearance 60% off packs. This one has this really nice muted orange which is going to go nice with that page right there. And this is double sided. So I'm going to cut this down to get this ready. Okay, one more snake story. Um, the family had gone to Sandbridge south of Virginia Beach. We have family down there and we went visiting and we rented a house on the beach. It was very nice. But then we decided we'd go to the park, which was down the end of the little peninsula there. And there was a boardwalk, like a nature walk. And big giant sign that said beware of water moccasins. Now we don't have water moccasins in Connecticut. Uh, the water's too cold up here. We have black snakes and we have water snakes. Water snakes are nasty but they're not poisonous. They're not as nasty as water moccasins. But they will bite. And um, so we decided that all well, this, uh, Mr. Possum, me, my sister, and her husband. So we decided we'd hike down there anyway. So it's kind of a one way in, one way out deal. Look how nice that goes with that paper. I think this paper from Heather C. And. That's a little too big, that doesn't matter. So I think first I'm gonna glue down a couple pieces on this side before I glue everything down on that side. So we hiked all the way to the end and there was observation port there and you get to see out over the, the marshy land there, and there's a lot of habitat for a lot of birds and stuff. So we hung out there for a little while, and then we decided we would head back. So we started walking towards where the trail was from the observation, oops, observation deck. And wasn't there a giant huge, humongous, black water moccasin snake sunning itself across the trail. I mean, all across the trail. And there was only one way in, one way out. So I'm like, eh, what are we going to do here? So you can't yell because, you know, they don't really hear you. They feel the vibrations and stuff. And uh, threw a couple sticks its way, not at it, but close by, you know, just to see if it would move, react. No, it's sunning itself. It's not going to move. Not going to move at all. So, you know, Possum Patty, being the master naturalist, has to come up with a solution on what are we going to do here. So I know the snakes react to more vibrations than noise. So it was my idea. I said, let's pretend we are something very large coming down the trail. Because if it feels like something very large is coming down the trail, it's probably going to move away because it's not going to want to get stepped on. So what we did was the four of us together, sort of like in a row, one, two, three, four, holding on to each other, we stepped in time, all 
four of us, so it was like eight legs. So we step four, boom. Then we step four, boom. We step four, boom. We step four, boom. And we we hit the the um, boardwalk as hard as we could with our feet, cause as much vibration as we could, and sure enough, it moved off the trail. Awesome Patty saves the day. Of course, Mr. Possum's like, we're never going down there again. But stuff like that doesn't bother me. Everybody was safe. We got out safely. Snake's not hurt. People are not hurt. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. No problem, no problem. Not too bad, not too bad. Okay, now we go this side. Glue all these pieces down. Let's see. Let's see. I'll put a lot of glue stick on here first, I think. Checking my camera. So do you have any snake stories that you would like to share? I know there's a few people who are nature lovers that watch the videos, especially the nature ones. So my snake yellow ray, she loved to eat goldfish. I had to go to the pet store and buy the they're called feeder fish, they're little tiny fish, ten cents each. And then I had a dog water bowl in her tank. And I plopped the fish down into the water bowl and she liked to get in there and swim around and catch them. of glue but that should dry clear I would think I would think a little tail needs to be glued down although sometimes I thought it'd be a big shot feed her by hand she would take food right from my hand call her she because I believe the female garter snakes are larger than the males and she was pretty big let me tell you one day I was feeding her by hand <laughs> she latched onto my hand she didn't mean to bite me she was just going after the goldfish that was my fault not the snakes It would have been fun to have her have babies because garter snakes have live babies. Some snakes lay eggs. Some snakes sort of hold the eggs on the inside till they hatch out, and then when the babies come out, they're alive, not in little eggs. Of course, they're all alive. I mean, they're alive inside the eggs, but you know what I mean. Well, I did not have a male snake, but that would have been fun. I love the orange with this. Oh my gosh, Heather, look how that matches. 
Okay, back to the snake. Okay, this is what I did. July 2nd, as I was walking down the lane to get the mail, a garter snake quickly scurried away. I put the information on there. I used a die cut to cut the tag, and I used the same paper as I used over there, the scraps that were left. And I decided to get out some brads because I never used my brads. I bought a whole bunch. And these are pretty. These are recollections. These are from Michaels. They had them on clearance once for 60% off, and I bought a bunch of different ones. So I thought I would take, where'd he go? The orange one, which is here, camouflaged on the sunflower. And what I had to do over here, though, is poke open the uh, corner there, because I'm going to put it like that, the corner. And let's see, what do I need to do? I need to poke a hole in my pokey tool where I'm going to put this. I'm going to try and get it inside there. And this is a shorter page so the tag can stick out. So I can put it like somewhere around there. But I'm also going to glue it so that it doesn't move around. Put a little glue on there. I did distress the edges and I went around the page a little bit with the vintage photo. I keep losing that thing. All right, there it is. Okay, that's got to go right where that hole is. And I put too much glue as always. I never think about where the paper's not going to be. Okay, so now I'm going to pin this back. Yeah, so I buy things and then I don't use them. Also because I'm not used to having things. And then I buy them and I forget I have them. I gotta wipe away some of that glue. It should dry invisible, right? It should dry so we don't have to worry about it. And now I gotta re glue in here. All this for a silly snake that slithered away. Well, at least I got to tell my snake stories. A few of them anyway. Come on. There we go. Move this back. Together. Make sure that's standing on its head. All right. And there is my snake in the grass story. Looks like something should be over there. What could go over there? What could go over there? Hmm. A little butterfly or something maybe a little tiny needs a little tiny something right there okay i pulled these out from the kim holtz field notes collection set and i just thought the colors went well on this page i put reminds me of my third grade classroom snake yellow ray and i took out this little butterfly which i think the colors all work well together and i'm just going to fill that space because Goodness me, you know, we can't have any empty spaces at all. Oops. Fill the space. You don't have to fill every space. 
but I see a space and I want to put something in there. Plus I wrote another sentence. So now I have two sentences on this page. That was my goal, right? My first goal was to write one sentence, and now my goal is to write two sentences. And let's see how long it takes before my goal becomes three sentences. So that's it. So thank you for hanging in there, all you nature lovers that don't mind looking at a nature journal page that has a snake on it and listening to my slithery, snaky stories. Much appreciated. And I just want to wish everybody... Thanks for coming along today. Happy nature journaling. Happy junk journaling. Bye-bye. <laughs>